Hello friends, this is Eli from Mystic Circuits, and today I'll be showing you how to build a zero HP OR gate. Uh, this is among the easier kits in our arsenal, but it is not the easiest kit. I would say that if you're absolutely starting, this should be fine, but if you want the easiest kit of all of the ones that we offer, um, the zero HP I attenuator is where I would start. This is a close second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take everything out of the bag and we are going to go ahead and verify that we have all of our parts and everything necessary. So put the bag to the side. I'm going to unfold this sheet. You'll see our quick, quick and dirty instructions. This should be enough for somebody who's built a kit before to be able to do this. But if you are watching this video, it's likely that you followed us through this QR code that takes you to a page on the OR gate on our GitHub. And uh, that will also have lengthier written instructions with pictures of each point. Um, I'm trying to cover my bases and have as many different kinds of instructions as possible to hopefully answer everyone's questions. So for now, we're going to put that to the side. You should see a paper sheet with all of the passive components that are going to be put on our board. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this other bag with all of the other components, the sort of more hardware oriented parts. And we're just going to verify that we have everything that we need before this starts. You'll see on this sheet, we have uh, three resistors, two diodes and a capacitor. It should all look roughly like this if you don't know what any of those things are, right? But if it looks different, um, go ahead and get in touch with me. We'll get you sorted out. Now, you should see a big pile of stuff over here. Um, first off, we're going to need four jacks, right? Those are the things that let us plug signals in and out of it. We're going to have some hardware for the case. So there should be four of these bolts or nuts that are made to go with the bolts, four rubber feet. We're going to have two short sides and two long sides for each case. The short sides have the holes in them. The long sides have the Mystic Circuits logo. Uh, there's a bottom plate with our hexagon logo, a top plate. You'll notice it says envelope on this side, but if you flip it over, it says or gate. All of our lids are dual sided in order to help us save some money. And then here's the main circuit board where everything is going to be soldered into. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and move all the case hardware to the side. And just move the jacks out of the way for now too. And then we're just going to focus on the circuit board and the passive components, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these resistors. I'm going to take them off the page. Put this paper to the side for now. We're going to take off any tape or little paper bits. You can see there are these pieces that keep them all together. I'm going to take those off as well. And uh, if you look here, you might have noticed it said 1K resistor on the page. There are three points on the board that say 1K, right? And all of them have a little circle and then a line connecting two holes in our circuit board. And uh, that line indicates the, con the two points that are going to be connected by our resistor. Um, I usually put the body of the resistor on the side with the circle right and so there's two ways to fold the resistor we're going to do ours in the sort of uh over the top skinny way right where basically the body of the resistor has one straight leg coming out and one leg that's kind of doing a u-turn around it right so i'm going to do these one at a time because these are this is one of the earlier easier kits and we're going to start with this middle piece right here right so i'm going to go ahead and put that in and then uh if i was just to flip this over right away you would see that the resistor 
it can possibly fall out a little bit. Let's see if I could focus this a little better, I guess. All right. So you can see the resistor sticking out of the board a little bit. I do this and then kind of shake or something. It's not doing it now, but it could come out more. So what we want to do in order to prevent that is we're going to push with one side so that the resistor is being pushed into the board. I'm going to take the legs and bend them away from each other, right? And uh, I'm probably going to move this leg over here because when we're soldering, if this leg was going over one of the other points that ends up wanting to get soldered, um, we might accidentally get solder somewhere that it's not supposed to be. So we're going to go ahead and do it like that. All right. So let's solder that joint. If you've never soldered before, I'm going to have a video in the description giving a, a more kind of concise instruction on how to do it. But one thing you're going to want to do every time you pick up your iron is to tin your iron. And uh, basically how that works is you can see one side is shiny. The other side is more brown, right? As I'm rotating my iron, uh, what we want to do is to kind of make sure that the shiny part is covered in freshly melted solder, right? And we do that because chemicals can accumulate on the tip of your iron that make it harder to solder, harder for solder to flow evenly that sometimes can lead to frustrating scenarios all right so I've, my iron is nice and shiny on this side at least now we're gonna go ahead and zoom back into our board and uh how a lot of people picture soldering is you take the point you stick it right into the place you want to solder and then you stick the solder in that's actually not how it how it goes what you want to do is you want to put your iron to the side and what that does is it maximizes the surface area of contact between the iron and the piece that you want to heat up. And then I'm going to take the solder. I'm going to put it on the joint that is getting soldered. I'm going to leave it there for a second and then pull away. And you can see that place where there used to be a hole with a leg sticking through it. There's now a nice gob of solder. Now I'm going to go ahead. I rotated the board because I want my iron to be flat against the side of this resistor. I'm going to stick my iron along the side, press some solder into it until it's nice and melted. And there you go. Now, I normally suggest to wait a second before you do this because your component could still be hot. My hands are not very sensitive to heat because I've been burned a bunch of times doing this. But basically, in order to verify that we've made a good solder connection, what you want to do is take the leg, wiggle it around, not a ton, but just enough to verify that you see the silver point right here where the solder's going all the way into the board. You want to make sure that that's not moving as you move the rest of the leg around because that would indicate that the solder hasn't made a good connection it's going to hold everything together as uh, your circuit board is moving through time and space, right? So wiggle it around a little bit. You can see it doesn't want to change shape in that area. That's a good sign. So now we're going to take our solder snippers and go close to the board as we can. And then we're going to make a little snap. What you want to do when you're cutting these leads is you want to cut from the sides without pulling out um, because you can actually ruin the connection you just made by doing that. So as you can see, there's some nice looking joints. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do another resistor. Take the resistor, bend it into a little U-turn, right? I'm going to take the long leg stick it through the white circle up here and then stick the other shorter leg through the hole right next to it, All right? You should be able to see it. I apologize if anything is slightly out of focus. I'm doing this with a DSLR and so it requires a lot of 
messing with the camera, but basically you should see it like that, right? Now we're going to push it all the way into the board. We're going to bend the legs like we did before. I'm going to move this leg to the side. so We don't actually get solder into this point. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our iron. Put it along the side of the leg and then push our solder into the point that we want it to melt on. Leave it there for a second. Take your iron away. Wait for just a moment and then wiggle, wiggle. Everything's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these legs off. Helps sometimes to bend the leg straight up so that you can actually get to it. Cut that leg off. Okay. Joints are all looking pretty good. There's like a little bead of extra solder right here. Not a huge deal, but I'm gonna move it just to avoid confusion. And now we're doing the third resistor all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna do a little U-turn resistor bend right there. I'm gonna take the uh, long leg, put it into the white circle right here. Short leg goes into the hole right next to it. It says 1K. Press all the way down, right? So it's nice and flat in the board. And then bend the legs away from all the closest joints to avoid solder getting somewhere it's not supposed to. All right. Now, same situation. Put the iron here. Melt the solder in. Rotate the board. Put the iron here. Melt the solder in. Right. Wiggle, wiggle. Everything's looking good. Cut off the legs. Not something you normally want to do, but we'll make an exception here. Joke will never get old for me. And then there you go. This is what you should see on the bottom of your board. This is what you should see on the top. All right, now we're gonna do our capacitor. So go ahead and take your piece of paper, grab this little orange dot on the bottom. If there's any tape on it, go ahead and take it off. But otherwise, you don't need to bend the legs. You just need to make sure this little rectangle, it says 10 NF next to it, we're going to put the legs into both of these holes right here, right? And press down. There you go. Now, again, kind of pressing this capacitor into the board. Pull them to the side. This one's nice because there aren't a ton of connections. I guess you could do like diagonal a little bit like that to keep it away from these connections. Um, just to make everything easier, there's, it's, you know, good to do a little bit of preparation in order to avoid solder getting into places you don't want it because that's the most annoying scenario to deal with. So same as before, put the iron next to our leg and solder, flip the board around. Now you could hypothetically go all the way around and solder like this. I'm I'm a, I'm really into things that make my life easier these days. So I just flip the board until it points towards me. And then I solder a leg. All right. Wait a moment. Wiggle. Wiggle. Everything's looking good. Cut off the legs. We're almost done with this part. All right, so now this is what the top of your board should look like, what the bottom of your board should look like, and we're going to solder in these two parts. These are called diodes. If we go onto our piece of paper here, you'll see diode right there. 
And now diodes are a little bit more complicated than the other parts. And that's because they have a direction that they want to go in. Should be able to see. It's a little tough, but there's a black line on these little red bodies right here. It's possible in a future kit, you might have a black body with a white line. Um, you'll also notice that the colors are different between the two sides. These are all indicating which side of the diode is what's called the cathode. And you don't need to know what that means. All you need to know is that the cathode is marked with a black line or a, in some cases a white line, but it's marked with a line, all right? Quit giving me a hard time about this. The cathode is marked with a line on one side of the body of the diode. All right. So we're going to take this tape off. We're going to take it off the paper. We're going to take off our tape. And if we look at our circuit board, you'll notice, hey, that little symbol for where the diode's going, not only is there an arrow pointing in one direction with a line on the front, but there's also a line on this little capsule shape where the diode's supposed to go. Some of you might think it's logical to put the line in the same place on the circuit board where it is on the body of the diode. And that was sort of my thinking about it, right? So I'm gonna put one of these down. You could see when I put these two next to each other that the lines are in the same place, all right? It's the other direction on this diode, but just with the diode that I'm showing you, the lines are in the same place. If you do this backwards, it is going to make your module not work correctly. All right, so I'm going to show you both diodes before we solder anything, just so that you can make absolutely certain that everything is lined up. See our diode sticking out? We can tell that the line is pointing in the same direction. I'm literally overlapping the line on the diode with the line on the circuit board, right? I'm going to push it all the way in and kind of like bend the legs in different directions. Now, take our other diode. You'll notice that the line is facing in the other direction, right? So we want to flip our diode around so that the line facing in the same direction. Both of our lines are going towards the middle of the circuit board. We bend our diode over into a little U shape. Push it in before it's all the way down. Just make sure the line, make sure that line's in the right spot. All right. I don't want any of you crossing this line. All right. The line right there, that's the end of the line. Make sure your lines are aligned and that they line up into the middle of the circuit board. All right. So before you start soldering, pause this video and make sure that your board looks like this. If you do it wrong, there's not much I can do to help you, all right? It might still do something fun, but it's not gonna be what you expected, okay? So that's what your board should look like. Now that you've paused and verified and checked this five times, we're gonna go ahead and solder the rest of it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and focus. All right. I'm not mad at you, I'm, I'm just disappointed. I'm kidding. I'm not, uh, you know, it's, I want I want you to make this right. Yeah, all right. It's going to be a lot easier. If we make sure that we're all in, a, in line. All right. So first I'm going to solder these two joints because they're facing my direction. All right. And then I'm going to rotate the board. I'm going to solder this joint. And you can see, even though the joint is facing in the opposite direction, I was able to kind of move my iron further out in that way. This is a thicker wire, so it's a little easier to do it. I've also been soldering for like 15 years, so that helps. Um, anyways, this is what you should see. Wiggle all the joints. Make sure nothing that seems like it shouldn't be moving is moving. Okay, now... And go ahead and bend up all these legs then chop them off with our wire cutter just gonna all right 
So now, this is what the bottom of the board should look like, what the top of the board should look like. All right. And we already checked the diode, so you don't need to check them again because you already soldered them in the right way. Um, I'm going to shorten some of these. I suggest if you have any that are sticking like really far off the board that you cut them just because um, they can accidentally make contact and bridge other things that they're not supposed to. Uh, but yeah, this is the top of our board. Now we're at a point where we can start doing the jacks. All right, so we have our jack right here. There's these three little legs and you'll notice that the square where the jack is supposed to go has three holes. Those legs go through the holes and the point where the the uh, cable goes into the jack is always facing the outside of the board, all right? So just go ahead and press each jack in until it makes a snug fit. And you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that each one is nice and flat against the side of the board. Just pressing into it. You can also do this. Sometimes that helps, but I find that just pressing on the top is the most surefire way to do it. You don't want your jack doing something like, uh, here. something like that. You can see there's a big gap underneath this jack that's going to make it really hard to put the case on. All right, so just go ahead and push it in. Now, this is what you should see underneath. On this design, uh, these side tabs are not soldered in. Uh, those are called the normalization tabs. Um, but if you're at all unsure, you you should just solder everything on the bottom. And I'll show you what that looks like. But uh, when I am soldering these myself, I don't solder these sideways tabs. So go ahead and hit these eight tabs that are facing... your direction and uh, I'll show you really fast this is what a joint should look like once it's filled in with solder you can see in comparison to this hole the hole where the leg is sitting through is not visible at all and it's making a nice evenly distributed shape that's kind of forming around the leg that's sticking through the hole To all the tabs that are facing the same direction. Okay, so like I said, I would normally stop here uh, because I know that these four pins aren't connected to anything. Um, you might as well just make sure your jacks are nice and flat at this point. If they aren't, you can heat up one of the legs and keep pushing into it until it is flat. Um, but if you're at all unsure and this is the first thing you've ever built, you should really just solder these two. There's no harm in it. It's more the kind of thing that when you're soldering 20 or 30 of these things together, it's like you don't want to waste time or solder on unnecessary parts. A wise friend of mine once said, there will always be another party, but eventually the world's going to run out of solder. So here's this. Um, in order to avoid unwanted bridges caused by a poor design of the bottom of the case i normally cut off these six tabs because uh i made a conductive trace on the bottom of the zero hp case because i thought it looked cool but 
doesn't always cause problems, but it's best just to avoid any uncertainty. Um, that, and, you know, I'm about to order more of these. Basically, you can see this silver here. If the bottom of your case is silver, then this is something you've got to worry about a little bit more than if it's white, which is what the next one is going to look like. So don't worry if you didn't understand that. Basically, just chop off these six. Make sure that all of these pins are nice and short and then flip it over. This is what you should see. Right? Nice soldered together or gate. A little bit of solder over here. It doesn't look like it's connected to anything, but you can sort of like... Nice thing about a soldering iron is it also sort of works as an eraser. Um, so you could just go back in, make sure that no none of these joints are con connected to any other joints that are next to them that they shouldn't be connected to. And now we're going to go ahead and take this OR gate and we're going to put it in a case. All right. So like I said before, there's two sides to the lid. What we want is for the text on our lid to show the same direction as the text on the OR gate instead of something like that, right? Because it's going to get really confusing if your ins and outs are swapped. You might think your unit doesn't work. Uh, I would highly suggest if something doesn't work, uh, make sure that everything is aligned the right way, right? So we're going to do it like this. And what we're going to do first, we're going to take our case lid and we're going to use it to sort of show ourselves where these little shorter sides should go, right? You can see there's a tab on top of each short side. Those tabs go into these holes, right? So um, the holes are closer to the top of the lid. What we're going to do is we're going to do like this and then like that. So one tab is going up, one tab is going down. And then when you put your case on, you should be able to align these holes with the point they were supposed to go to in the lid. And you might have to push a tiny bit. Eh. Come in. Okay, so now you can see there's a tab going through this hole and this hole, right? And uh, if we kind of zoom around, this is what you should be seeing, all right? That's, this is where you want to start off with just to verify the capacitor towards the bottom of the case, right? Now we're going to put on the long sides. I dropped one. Um, so now our long sides, I usually like to have the text facing up. We take the tab, put it into the top. You might have to push a little bit from the bottom. You can see all the little pieces don't always align right away, but as we sort of tighten everything up and get all the different pieces together, it should all fit together like a puzzle, right? So now this is what you should be seeing. And I'm going to flip this over, take the bottom and orient it so that the tabs are aligned with the holes in your case. And this is the part that usually involves, um, usually what I'll do is I'll make sure that the two tabs on one side are in, right? And then this involves some trickery to kind of push everything. <laughs> right now, this third piece is in, and now we just need to align that last piece. You'll kind of feel it all click into place, right? You can see now all the pieces fit together nicely. And uh, this is the point where it makes sense to start putting in the case hardware in order to tighten everything up and keep it all together. So we're going to start with one of these bolts. Put it through one of the corners. You'll notice sometimes it won't go all the way through without a little bit of help. So I'll just screw it through the rest of the way if it doesn't want to nicely push through and you can take a rubber foot place it here and then a nut place it inside the rubber foot 
And now I'm going to put my finger into where the cavity with the nut is. And uh, I'm going to kind of push gently into this screw so that the nut will hopefully mate with the threading of the screw. I'm going to tighten this bolt until everything feels nice and snug. All right. So now I'm going to go to the other corner. Put on the rubber foot. Put a nut inside the rubber foot. Whoop. See why I have to push with my finger. Sometimes the nuts will fly away. And kind of gently tighten. You might have to wiggle the nut around until it's flat and making contact with the threading of the bolt. But if you just work at it a little bit, it'll all work out. Whoop. Nut goes into the little hole. Now, tightening that bolt. Nut. Hole. Screw. Bolt. Screw. Not nut. Foot. Go on bolt. Not. Nut. Nut, not bolt. Nut, go in hole. Finger. Screw. There we go. There you have it. A zero HP or gate. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful in your life? Uh, we're going to go ahead and have a little video, uh, another section to the video at the end of this that shows you how to test and make sure that your OR gate is working correctly. Um, but yeah, that's this is a, one of the simpler ver, uh, zero HPs. Like I said, hopefully everything is looking good for you. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm setting up a little test patch for testing your zero HP or gate right here. I have a ultra kick patch to my output, but you don't need anything like that. You just need something that accepts a trigger and a patch out of the output. And I'm going to take one of these trigger streams from the Pamela's new workout, patch into the input, patch into either input. You should hear the same thing, patch into both inputs. You should hear some kind of change. And then, uh, so, this sounds good to me, but you'll notice when I patched out of the trig, the trig doesn't really do very much. That's because the trig uh, gets rid of a lot of signal levels. So it does not play nicely with every trigger input. What I'm going to go ahead and do is patch into the clock of tree, which is designed to take very it'd be very sensitive to low level triggers for working with video. Um, you can also just patch it into a... Uh, something that lets you look at the signal levels. You can see just a little bit right there that there is a signal level coming through. I honestly don't really use the trig outputs very much um, for this reason, but it is technically working. So yeah, hopefully the OR gate was an easy and uh, informative build for you. I hope you have a lot of fun patching with it. And uh, yeah, have a nice one.